Hi, I'm Elise, this is Witch Way, and today I'll be taking you through the witch lore of The Witches of East End. The novel The Witches of East End was written by Melissa de la Cruz and first published in 2011. It was adapted to the small screen in 2013 and stars Julia Ormond as Joanna Beauchamp, Madkin Amick as Wendy Beauchamp, Jenna Dewan as Freya Beauchamp, Rachel Boston as Ingrid Beauchamp, Daniel De Tommaso as Killian Gardner, Eric Winter as Dash Gardner, and many more. But we'll get to them. This supernatural drama series follows the Beauchamps, a family of semi-immortal witches in their newest incarnation in the town of East End. Ingrid and Freya Beauchamp are rediscovering their abilities as witches, uncover their family history via their aunt and mother, and become involved with the Gardner brothers, who in turn have their own latent abilities to unlock. Murder, love, revenge and mystery follow as the family's past catches up with them, and be warned, there are minor spoilers ahead. Witches in this series are actually from another realm, Asgard. Most of you will be familiar with this name from Norse mythology, where it is the home of the gods. Well, in this case, it's the home of witches. This threw me a bit with names like Wendy and Joanna, but made sense with Ingrid and especially Freya, being named after the Norse goddess of the same name, whose domain covers magic, also known as Seda. The actress who portrays Freya in this series has also played witch before, in 2007's horror Tamara. That was an interesting watch. I wasn't sure what quite to make of it, but go check it out yourself to see what I mean. Asgard in this series is ruled by King Nicholas, a powerful magic user who is portrayed by Stephen Burkhoff, himself having portrayed real world ceremonial magician Alistair Crowley not once, but twice, voicing him in 2004's Masters of Darkness and portraying him in 2021's Creation Stories, both of which I will be looking more into because they look very fascinating. The Beauchamps fled Asgard and King Nicholas into our world in 1662. Not long after, in 1693, Freya and Ingrid were burned as witches. The year seems to imply that this may have happened during the Salem Witch Trials, which ended that same year. Of course, the accused during those trials were not burned at the stake, but hanged, as happens to the sisters in Salem in the novel. They were apparently turned in by the witch Vidar, who is portrayed by Matt Fruel, who also had other witchy roles in the past, as the binder in the series The Magicians. In this series, however, he seems to be quite adept in using hair in his charms to influence others. Hair was indeed believed to have power as it contained part of a person's essence. We revisit the lives of the Beauchamp witches in Baltimore 1848, where Freya meets her past love interest, Edgar Allan Poe. Yes, the very same. Meeting Freya's aunt Wendy, who can transform into a black cat, apparently gave him inspiration for one of his short stories. Where do you think he got the idea for the black cat? In Poe's short essay on the black cat comes the infamous line from many films, all of them witches. He meets the Beauchamps in the parlor they ran. Among the entertainment offered here, they read people's fortunes and commune with the spirits. Have you heard of the table turning? The parlor game? It is no game. Some people claim to hear spirits of the dead. Table turning or table tapping was popularized during the modern spiritualist movement as a method of communicating with the spirits. Asking them questions, the spirits would respond with turning or tapping on the table. Freya instead chooses a crystal ball for her seance, a classic fortune telling tool. We also see her using an early tarot deck. Later in their life in the 1970s, we see another form of divination, palmistry. 
reading the lines of the palm to tell a person's future. This is done by the witch Alex, portrayed by Michelle Hurd, who also appeared in the Charmed series as the demon Katya. See my witch lore review on the Charmed series for more on that. I wish they explored the 70s witches more, as this was a time when witchcraft really exploded. But next up is the present day, where the Beauchamps are living in East End. And of course, with our modern witches comes modern pop culture references from The Wizard of Oz. Are you gonna drop a house on me? No, I'm a good witch. You know, one of the, one of the pretty ones. <laughs> Wendy is only recently back in town, she travels light, and Joanna is maybe an artist? I would have liked to have seen more of her magic used in this way, though we do get to see that with another witch later in the series, so I guess that's cool. Freya works at a bar, eventually learning to make magical cocktails, which I thought was a really cool concept. And in this scene, we've got the killer song Black Magic by the Magic Wands. If you want to know more about magical drinks from a real world witch, head on over to TikTok and check out Lizzie and the Bats, where a kitchen witch shows you how it's done. I'll be sure to link it below. Ingrid works at East End Public Library and specializes in studying East End's occult history. I definitely vibe with her. Her friend Hudson also works at the library and they jokingly do a fertility ritual for their friend. This actor, Tom Lenk, has previously used incantations to summon demons as Andrew in Buffy the Vampire Slayer. See my witches of Buffy the Vampire Slayer for more on those witches. Spike from Buffy also makes an appearance on this show as the witch Tarkov. James Masters has also had other witchy roles as Xavier from the series The Order and Don Stark in an episode of Supernatural. And you can check out my Witches of Supernatural for more on that show. Tarkov is brought in blackmailing Frederick, who, as it turns out, what a twist, is Freya's twin and they have that twin magic going on. There's a lot of mythology behind twins, but I'll save that for another time. But then we meet another set of twin witches, <laughs> twitches, who have a very different kind of magic going on. Ew. Twincest? Seriously? One of the twins, Isis, has the ability to shift into a rat. This actress, Rachel Nichols, has also played Witch before, as Samantha in 2006's The Woods and Tamara in 2011's Conan the Barbarian. Now we've met the Beauchamps, let's check out their family grimoire. I do love a good spell book. Despite being from Asgard, their grimoire is in Latin. It is beautiful and seems to be made out of completely original artworks. And I only recognize two symbols being the pentagram and the symbol of the triple goddess. But this isn't the only grimoire we see. The Gardner brothers discover their family grimoire, which is apparently in Old Norse. So go figure. And in this book, we do have some artwork inspired from symbols in Agrippa's three books of occult philosophy. The gardener's mother is portrayed by Virginia Madsen, who has also played witch before in 2013's The Last Keepers, a great film, definitely worth checking out. The discovery of this spell book confirms the brothers' suspicions. We're warlocks. Warlock is a term used by some, but not all, male witches. Killian's power is unlocked when he is caught under the spell of the witch Eva. She is portrayed by Bianca Lawson, who has also played witch before in The Vampire Diaries, although very briefly, and of course you can check out my Witches of the Vampire Diaries for more on that. The witch Eva was apparently given her powers by a warlock, so it appears not all witches are from Asgard, including the magic user that Eva sends Killian to. Wait here, Brujo. Brujo is the Spanish term for a male practitioner of magic, a bruja being their female counterpart. This series scores for lore, 
history and the craft. And this was a highly recommended series by my viewers. So thank you very much. There was a bit to look into on this one. And what did you think of it? Let me know in the comments below, as well as any other recommendations. You can follow me on my linked social medias for some additional content, but please remember to like, share this video and subscribe to my channel to stay notified of any new content that I upload. And as always, thank you very much for watching here on Which Way.